BJ, I'm so excited. I love our next guest, and I love his interviews, especially when he's talking about past opponents. So his speed surprised you? Because we've been talking about that a lot. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, everybody, anybody can be fast in the first couple rounds. Anybody. Um, my wife is fast in the first round. <laughs> Please welcome to the show UFC flyweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse uh, Johnson. That's awesome. You know, I know what you're talking about, Demetrius. They can be fast in the first round, those wives. Absolutely. You I know. love your wife's here. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, that's Worked fantastic. out perfect. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> like we, oh, like we planned it. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, man, it's 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 a pleasure to have you here because you're, you're you're a hometown boy, so we love that. And the UFC is awesome. And and to me, just can you still believe it? I mean, you know, everybody has a desire to do stuff. I know a lot of dudes that do all sorts of level of MMA fighting. You know, whether they're at the Rumble on the Ridge, whether they're just at a gym, everybody has a dream to do something. And dude, you're the champ. I mean, you know that that, that ain't easy to do. Yeah. I mean, just like you said, I mean, you hit it right on the nail. Um, everybody starts somewhere, and I started here in, in Washington State, down in Auburn. Um, I fight at Rumble on the Ridge, fight at Genesis, yep. and, you know, here I, here I am now fighting for the best organization in the world for the UFC, and, and I, I'm the champ, you know, I'm just, I like to look at it as a man who's just trying to pay his bills and work hard. So I love that you're the first champ in the flyweight, <laughs> too, so it's like forever, the history will be that you are the guy. Yeah, absolutely, you know, my buddy Joseph Benavides, he said he was going to be the George Washington of, you know, the flyweight division, <laughs> I like to think of myself as the Barack Obama of the flyweight division. I like that. <laughs> Okay, that works. And, you know, the, the thing was is that in, the, in, in some of the other stuff you were doing, there was no flyweight. So here you are really fighting out of your league, which is what I love about you. And I, and I, I think Joe Rogan said, you know what? If they let this guy fight in the flyweight division, he's going to kick ass. Because right now, the poor guy is holding his own, but he's in the wrong, uh, which, I, which you know, you, you hear people say stuff. But Joe was, I mean, obviously uh, absolutely right about you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's one of the things I like about Joe Rogan is that he's actually educating the sport. Yeah. And for me, fighting you know, 135 pounds. You know, I remember when I was fighting Dominic Cruz during training camp, I was coming home weighing 138 pounds. And, you know, I know Dominic is a big boy. So it is what it is. You know, I have to do what I have to do to get where I am today. But, you know, no regrets. I, I enjoyed the time at 135. It was awesome. Well, did you like, though, playing uh, fighting in the heavier weights because it kind of forced you to be able to eat more? Like, I would love to uh, be like, hey, Steve, you need to go into the 250-pound division of radio DJs. I'm like, sweet, steaks, let's do this. Absolutely, man. I mean, now that I have to diet <laughs> yeah. and, and, and cut weight, and now, like, you know, I woke up this morning at 147.2, and I was like, and I had us out last night, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is going to be a long weight cut. I, <laughs> like, since I had surgery, now, like, I kind of, you know, got bigger because I've been doing more weight training and so now I gotta get the weight off and it's just it's, a, be it's like, a headache be like Bradley Cooper in a silver linings playbook where he's always with a garbage bag over him running <laughs> <Yeah>. everywhere <laughs> how sad is exactly. that I was just thinking the same thing you and I are sick people <laughs> Really, Minus gonna, all the weird yeah. mental issues, I mean, yeah. just like Bradley Cooper. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, keep, we'll keep the bipolar part of it out of that. I got to ask you because like, I, I, I love what you're doing, and I, I see like a lot of the guys are talking about who's who's next for you. And I know you're going to be fighting out with Moraga on uh, John Moraga on uh, July 27th yeah. at the Key Arena. You know what? Tickets are on Fox. On, yeah, tickets are on sale. But so I see like all the lists of all the guys are like, oh, this guy be a good fight, and they write like all these reviews about all the guys that could be good, you know, contenders for the championship, and and everything always ends with, oh, and he lost to Demetrius, and oh, he lost. So I'm just like, where is I mean, who do you see as the, the, the upcoming competition for you in the flyweight division? Absolutely. You know, I believe John Moraga is the next um, big, um, you know, challenge for me as, mm-hmm. as I am fighting him July 27th. Um, other than that, you know, just because I beat the guys before, um, you know, I can fight him again. And who knows, I can lose to, you know, Joseph That's or John true. Dotson. And then, you know, maybe I can work my way back up the ladder and create a trilogy like, you know, Randy Couture and Chuck Adela have. But... Right now, I don't want to lose, so I want to keep on beating him. So if I beat him twice in a row, it's like, haha, two out of three, I win. But um, yeah, yeah, that's not a bad way to go if you're the guy that just keeps winning. I, I <laughs> totally know, agree. Rather than having to come back, and here's the comeback story. <laughs> but here's the most important question: Where does Morega? Where does he uh, rank against your wife? That's the important question because oh, you know how fast she is in the first couple <laughs> rounds. So. I, I, I totally agree. You know, I, I believe my wife's ranked uh, way higher than Moraga. You know, I, I do it all the time, <laughs> oh, and that's you know, awesome. And I lose. I lost a battle this morning about direction. So you, you see, <laughs> so that's I'm, why she has the championship now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I and of course I. I love, I love the whole, I love the Mighty Mouse thing, man. Uh, you know, because some people might think there's no way I want to be a fighter and I want my nickname to be Mighty Mouse. 
But I mean, the, you know, your your iconic victory, uh, you know, <laughs> pose and stuff like your your touchdown dance, if you will. I mean, all of that is awesome. Uh, how is it that you embrace that? Because, like I said, man, you know, a lot of people, even though Mighty Mouse saves the day, it still seems like a diminutive type of thing, which is, you know, obviously flyway. I, I, I love that you embrace it. How did that even come to be? You know what? Um, the nickname came from you know me training when I was uh, in my younger amateur career, and then it just landed, and then people loved it, and then me, you know, do my um, as you said, you know, my victory victory dance or whatever um it just came from me just being me like i'm a huge video game addict and you know when i play street fighter you know when ryu wins he's like bro you wins he's like Hua! so i'm like you know, oh yeah I, I, i'm gonna do my own thing and that just came about it just you know all the the video games i played and just worked that to be what it was man so i mean if, if you could have like a video game done like that where you know you could do a street fighter type thing mortal Kombat, would you what would your fatality be you know oh, what I mean? man. that's uh, what i because that's the, that's what it reminds me of. it totally reminded yeah. me of a video game where it's like Fatality. Fatality. <laughs> <laughs> I was so much digging that, going, man, this would this would be great. Now, or 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 you know, or you can even have a Bay Ballady. I don't know what yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that that's awesome, man. I have to ask you because it seems like there's a lot of great characters in the flyweight division already. I know, like there's the guy, the, the green hair was it, uh, uh, Luis uh, Gudno? Good, that, yeah. That, but then the, there's the guy, Uncle Creepy. Oh man, how do you even? <laughs> I mean, Pete, I don't know if you've seen this guy. Uh, it's Ian McCall, and, okay. and his mustache has got the twirly him handlebar oh, mustache that's awesome he's got the guy liner on mm-hmm. in the nail polish <laughs> I mean that's got to get in your head if you're in the if you're in there and you're about to take them on. I mean, how do you not laugh? Well, like, <laughs> the, the biggest thing is like when me and McCall first fight in Australia, it, came, it was a it, it was probably one of my toughest fights. And then you know it, it ended up going to draw, and then we were going to fight again. They're like, okay, we'll fight again in three months. So like, there's times when like you know I'll be dreaming about that mustache, and then I'll see kids at the store like with that mustache, and I'm just like that mustache. It's I, I just, you. It's almost like it's trademark for Ian McCall now. And so like when I see it, I'm like, we're at. Uh, Minchie's one day and I was like I had to punch that baby in the face he's got his mustache on <laughs> this one goes babe and I was like just being honest <laughs> Oh, if you're uh, talking Menchie's, what's your flavor? Dolce de leche, I hope. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a cake batter guy. I oh, love okay. just straight nothing cake batter. With, nothing Turns wrong with that. Turns out we're neighbors. <laughs> really? Practically. Yeah, right near me. In, well, in, good, because I, I, you know what? <laughs> if you get out of line, now we got a guy that can fix you up. <laughs> I'm have to take you to Trapper so you can eat my roll. Absolutely. I'd love to. <laughs> it doesn't sound that, right. That does, no, that does not sound right at all. You can, uh, by the way, no, you can't take Demetrius to Trapper's because it's addictive and he's trying to cut. Yeah, okay, he's trying to cut weight there. You can't take him to July. It's so damn good. And that's why I'm saying, even Menchie's, how do you go in there and not go crazy? Because they let you, they let you have at all their stuff. Absolutely, I haven't been in Menchie's in a long time, so yeah, there you go. I, <laughs> now it's just cutting back and just training, like getting my weight under control. So the BJ Shea Morning Experience on ninety nine point nine KISW.